Hi guys, welcome back to the Caterpillar Cross Stitch. If you are new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Sean, and today we are gonna be doing a stitch with me. I am super excited to be sitting down with you all, stitching and catching up. This is my first ever stitch with me, so I am so excited to be filming this video for you today. I am gonna be stitching deck the holes in today's video. I haven't made too much progress on this. I actually started this in a recent video filmed for you guys as an example, but I know so many of you have actually completed this and, and finished it in the same way that Sally did it as a hanger, which I think is such a wonderful way to finish this piece. Now I've started in the center of the design, which is tends to be where I mainly uh, start my pieces. So as you can see, I have not made too much progress. So I've started on the S, which is where we have the mistletoe word. So hopefully we'll make a bit more progress. Now, this is the kit that I'm working from. So I do also have the little matching needle minder, which I absolutely love as uh, it also matches the design. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be playing a little game, which I would love for you all to join in with me. And the game is called This or That. Now you, you're probably familiar with this game if you are over on Instagram. It's a very popular game that you'll see on different stitches stories. So I thought it'd be really good fun to do that today. So I'm gonna be answering the questions as well or the this or that answers. And I would love for you to join in whilst you're stitching or if you just want to relax and watch, that's absolutely fine. But if you do wanna take part, then I would love for you to leave your answers down below so we can go and have a look at your answers. So I'm gonna get set up on my Lyra stand. My Lyra stand is here on the left going to get everything set up and then we'll get started. So we are set up now, the project is now in the Larry stand. I have my pattern here on my magnetic board and I also have the this or that game we're going to be playing. So there are 10 this or that questions, so not too many, but I think this is going to be quite a lot of fun, especially whilst we are stitching. So the first one is Ada or even weave slash linen. Now, I didn't know anything about even weave or linen a few years ago. Um, I was taught on Ada and really only knew about Ada. I didn't realize that there was anything else on the market. And I would have to say, if I had a choice, I would choose even weave over all of them. Um, but I do stitch on Ada and linen as well, but my preferred option is even weave. I do have some projects which are on Ada and I'm currently stitching on Ada. So it's not something I wouldn't stitch on, you know, I would stitch on all of them. The last piece that I actually finished was on linen. Uh, linen is my least, my least favorite. Um, I do prefer the stitches to all be the same size and linen with the way the fabric is, is woven, um, it can change the size of the, of the stitches throughout. And I think that does give it that extra, um, you know, a lot of people do like that. It, it does give it a little extra um, look to a design and sometimes it really does actually work for the design. Uh, but yeah, I prefer even weave. So leave down below if you are playing along what your favorite is. Okay, so the next one is who or Q-snap. So which one do we prefer? I actually started in a, in a hoop. Um, again, didn't know anything about a Q-snap. I'm not really sure if Q-snaps were around when I started. I started stitching around 20 years ago, 21 years ago, something like that. Um, it's probably longer than that actually. So I'm not sure if Q-snaps were really a thing when I was, when I was learning. So I grew up using Q-snaps, sorry, using hoops. Um, and then it's only again recently 
where I started to venture out a little bit to see what was what was available and then I came across QSnap. So I personally prefer to use a QSnap. I think a lot of it does come down to I use a Lowry stand and the QSnaps do really work well with a Lowry stand. Whereas a hoop, I do tend to struggle to clamp it in place. Um, so I think a lot of it does come down to having a Lowry stand and needing to, uh, to clamp the Q-snap into place. Um, but I know a lot of you do also stitch on hoops and I think it really does come down to personal preference, which I think is one of my favorite things about stitching is that, you know, it really is down to your own preferences and there's so many different options and there isn't really a right or wrong way in stitching. It really is how you prefer and as long as you get the end result that you want, that is really the main the main thing. It doesn't really matter how you get there and that is one of the things that I do really, really enjoy about stitching. Okay, let me see where I am getting to. Okay, I'm on track. No frogging at the moment. So next one, let's go to number three. So we have a frame or holding your stitching. So do you prefer to have it in a frame like I do here with a Larry stand or do you prefer to hold your Q-snap or your stitching or hand stitching, however you like to stitch, which one do you prefer? Now, I think if I had a choice, I would actually prefer to hand stitch as I do really like to have my stitching quite close up to my face as I find I can really see the stitches really well and can also make sure that I'm stitching, you know, my stitches are quite neat. However, I think I have mentioned this before, I do struggle with my wrists so I'm unable to hold my stitching um, for even small periods of time. So I don't really have a choice but to use a stand. So, um, so yeah, I would need to have a frame, um, not even just down to personal choice, but just because I do need it to be able to stitch. And so when I invested in the Lowry stand, it was one of the best investments I have made for in my stitching as it really did allow me to carry on stitching for long periods of time whereas before I would need to stitch for a little while and then put it down and even put it down for a few days um, whereas now the Lowry stand really does it allows me to free as you can see I'm stitching with with two hands at the moment and uh, yeah it really does allow me to stitch um, for long periods of time so what is your answer? leave down below if you're playing along. Where are we up to here? So three, three, okay. Uh, yeah, I think we know where we're at. Okay, so the next one, number four, is PDF or printout. So do you prefer to work from a hard copy? like I am right now, or do you prefer to work from a PDF? Now, this is a tough one because I think there's pros and cons to both. With a PDF, I think it's great that you can zoom in, you can make the stitching a lot bigger, whereas obviously if you're working from a printable, um, you know, hard copy, you can't zoom in, unfortunately. Although, well, you could use a magnifying glass, I suppose that would allow you to, to zoom in, but PDF does allow you to zoom in, which um, is great. However, a hard copy, it does allow you to mark it off if you wanted with a highlighter. Um, it allows you to stick it on a magnet board, which I have here. You can also, um, keep it and stitch again. You don't have to um, rely on your device to store it and you're not relying on the battery life of your device to, to continue. The amount of times I've had PDFs 
on my phone and my phone ran out of battery. Um, so I think there's pros and cons to both. But if I had to pick which one I preferred, I think I probably would say a printout. Um, unless it's a pattern that is in Pattern Keeper, um, unless it was a, a big, big pattern, um, then Pattern Keeper is, is a really good tool to have. But um, yeah, I would have to say a printout if I was to uh, if I was to choose which one. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, number five, DMC or hand dyed threads. Hmm, another tough one. Um, I think it really depends on the design that you're stitching from, for me anyway. Um, I think I like the, the effect that hand dyed fabrics give, but I think sometimes just DMC can really work really well. Um, and so, oh, this is a really, really tough one. And I'm not really sure which one I would go for. I think I will go with what I tend to stitch mostly with, and that is um, DMC. I think stitching with DMC is a bit more straightforward. You know, you can stitch, um, you don't need to worry about the variegation. Um, so I think DMC is a lot easier to work with, but I do really enjoy the effects that hand dyed threads do give to certain designs. So yeah, it's a tough one really. It's a tough one to choose. I think if, if the design calls for the hand dyed threads, then I would choose hand dyed threads. Um, but I do enjoy working with DMC as well. I think one of the things that I really enjoy about DMC is there's so many different colours. That's one thing that I really do do like. And obviously the, the difference in price as well, you know, DMC is a lot cheaper, a lot more affordable than hand dyed threads, but I do like the effect of hand dyed threads. Okay, moving on, number six one whip or multiple whips. So for those of you who might not know what a whip is, whip is whip working in progress or work in progress. So do you prefer to work on one project and complete it or have multiple whips on the go? Now this one's an easy one for me because I have 15 whips currently, which is quite a lot, but I don't think there's a lot in the community. I know a lot of stitchers who have a lot more whips than that, but for me, 15 whips is quite a lot. Um, so I am trying to uh, finish a few before I start anymore, which is very difficult, especially at this time of year, where you, know, you have all of your seasonal designs coming out and um, all your seasonal projects that you've worked on that you want to uh, you want to stitch so yeah 15 is quite a lot for me but like I said I know it's not a lot in the community now I used to be someone who stitched monogamously and I actually found that it it's one of the reasons why I lost my stitchy book quite a lot so I used to uh, start projects and then put them down for quite a long time and I found that having multiple whips on the go really helped me to uh, sustain that stitchy bug and to keep stitching. So yeah, for me, I prefer to have multiple whips but I also understand not wanting to have multiple whips. Oh, we've got a knot. Oh, we've got it sorted. Um, I know quite a lot of you prefer to just stitch one thing at a time and I do understand that and uh, I think if you if that's how you prefer to stitch then that's like I said it's one of the things that I love about stitching is that you can really you can make it however you want you know it's there's no right or wrong answer it's exactly how you want to stitch. So the next one is number seven English method or Danish method. So the English method is one stitch at a time the Danish method is, you know, where you've stitched half a stitch for 10 stitches or however many stitches, and then you go back with the top leg. So I stitch one at a time. I 
find that if I ever need to frog anything or I've made a mistake, it's a lot easier for me to remove the stitches when I've stitched one at a time than if I stitched quite a lot, half stitches and then back. So I like to use the English method. Number eight, floss drops or bobbins. So I started with bobbins when I really started to find my feet with stitching as I got older. I started with bobbins but then I did move across to um, floss drops. I do prefer floss drops because I like to use the loop method. So I do prefer to use floss drops because I'm able to pull one strand out and it not really, um, and I don't really need to do anything with the thread. It's a lot easier, it's a lot faster for me personally, but I do know quite a lot of you like to use bobbins and um, they are a really good way of uh, storing storing um, your, your threads. Okay, so we have a color change, how exciting. So I just wanna quickly show what I do with these um, new Caterpillar cross stitch holders. So I have quite a lot of thread still left on um, from the cut off. So I'm now gonna add this into the little hole here, which I really love about this design. And it's, it's the first design I have seen on these type of cards with these additional holes as they are great as you can just feed it into the little hoop and you then have it ready to go when you need it which i think is wonderful so we're now moving on to this gorgeous red i would love to see what color this is so this is dmc 606 gorgeous bright red i really love this color so we're gonna change our thread color and we'll continue with the game. Okay, so the next one, number nine, needle minder or live life on the edge. So do you prefer to use a needle minder or do you prefer to use a different method? So for me personally, I do prefer to use a needle minder. I think they are a great little tool and they really have saved my needle from being lost so many times. Uh, I just think it's great to be able to come back to your project and you know exactly where your needle is. It's gonna be on your needle minder and I really think it adds to the project. You know, I love that Sally brings out a, a matching needle minder to her designs. I think it really does bring this extra feel when you're stitching. And I really do wish I knew about needle minders a long time ago um, because I just think they just bring just a little extra feel to your stitching and they make for a really great gift as well. Um, there's so many different designs and options out there for needle minders. You know, you can really cater it to to the person if you're you know buying it as as a gift and so yeah for me i would opt for needle minders so the next one which is our last question for the this or that game and that is color charts or black and white now i prefer colored charts as i do find them easier to read especially at a glance um, like as I said you know you can't really zoom in like you can on a PDF now obviously you can have a magnifying glass which I know many stitches use to help with stitching but I do prefer to use uh, or stitch from a colored chart as I do find it easier to stitch from I find I make less mistakes in picking the right color colored thread and um, yeah, I just, I do, I just prefer to uh, stitch from a coloured chart. So I would love to hear what your questions are. If you have taken part in today's game, I would love to hear what your op options were. Which ones did you choose? Leave them down below in the comment section um, if you did, did take part. Now, let's see where I got up to. 
We didn't get too far with, uh, with the stitching, but that is okay. Every progress, every stitch is progress. So this is where we got to. So we're now on the red color, this gorgeous red color. This is one of my favorite DNC uh, threads for their red range. And so yeah, thank you so much for joining me and stitching me today. I hope you have enjoyed this little um, stitch with me and the little game. I would love to hear what your answers were. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of the week and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.